if you can look into the future, let's just say a crystal ball, and be able to see where you may be tomorrow or a week from now, or where your family member will be tomorrow or a week from now, or even next year, and you glimpse into this future and you see that death is upon you, that you see that something's going to happen and you're going to lose your life. Maybe a heart attack, maybe an accident of some sort. Maybe a loved one will be gone in similar ways. What would you do? What would you do if you looked further ahead into the future and saw darkness and saw that your life is over? See, too many people think that tomorrow's promise to them. Too many people think that you're just automatically going to wake up automatically when the alarm go off. But guess what? All around the world, there's people's alarms that have went off that will go off in the morning and they're not waking up. That could be you. And that can be consequences that I want to share in this message where I'm going to talk about the occupants of hell and those that will be there and why you want no part of this. Hi, welcome back to Evangelism for God, the channel that exposes Satan and his devices and for who he is, and the channel that speaks about issues that the Christian community and church run away from. Now, as many of you know, over the several weeks here, I always talk about I got my notes. I bought my notes because I don't want to forget anything, and I'm going to give you six points. I'm going to give you six types Six groups, people are, are uh, six people or groups or what you want to call it, that's going to be occupying hell. And did, is God, does he send us there? Is hell for us? Because one of the biggest things is, is that Satan's deception that he has gotten uh, people to, and I'm going to do a message on this deception down the road of how, he has utilized taking the doctrine of hell and to so for an unbeliever, they don't really think it exists. For a person that's a new believer and things, they make them question is really hell reality. And we're going to talk about hell in future videos and of some of the other uh, religions that look differently with hell and why. So stay with me on that. But Satan's deception. There's a way that he's deceived. There's three points on that that he has used to cause people to think that hell really is not anything to be concerned with because it really don't exist. A lie. He's the master of lies. As I always told you, he's an angel, a light. He's a deceptor. He's a sly, slick, no good being. And he will utilize whatever methods he can to bring everybody down with him. Now, with these points, with the occupants of hell, there's six points I want to make for you today, really quick. Because this is very important within these last days. Because whether you like it or not, we're in the last days. Whether you believe that there's a heaven or hell, doesn't change anything. Just because you say, well, I don't believe in heaven or hell. I've had people tell me, uh, uh, well, you know, it's just junk, you know, you need to follow science more. It's junk, science, and all of this crazy talk and things are like that. Just, but just because you don't believe, I'll match the Bible up against any type of scientific theory that's out there. Now, the first person that's going to be occupying hell, having my notes here, is Satan. And here's the thing. Hell is not. Let me, let me, let me go back. You ever been to a party or had someone come to a party that's uninvited? Have you ever had that happen? 
I know when I was younger in college and stuff and friends, come on, you know, my, but this party, but it really was by invitation only, but hey, you drag some people along. And unfortunately, in today's times, when that happens, sometimes people bring troublemakers into because some of these outsiders that come in sometimes can stir up trouble. But uninvited. Guess what? Hell is a place where there's there's somebody that's uninvited there. So stick with me till I get to the last point. First point. Satan. And I'm going to put the scriptures in the description so you can go back because I don't have time to elaborate on all of this. The video will be too long. It's too complex. You know, this channel is about trying to keep it simplistic and just make it to where if somebody that don't know the Lord or someone that knows the Lord, you know, the beginner, the, the babes in Christ and for you seasoned people as well, just study, go do your research. But I'm going to give you the highlights. Satan is going to be the occupant of hell. His time is coming to an end. It's getting nearer for him. He has stepped it up. That's why things are getting more in turmoil that you see around the world right now. He knows we are in the last days. And the Bible has given us all of the blueprints and, and the things to see what is happening to tell us that my return is near. So Satan is the one person, when it's all said and done, he's going to be the main one that's going to be occupying hell. Number two is the Antichrist. As we hit the tribulation, because we talk about Jesus come, the church is going to be raptured out of here. If you believe in Christ and have given your life to the Lord, bye-bye. We are out. We get to see you. We won't be, it's going to be a terrible time here on earth that you don't want no part of. And the Antichrist is going to be, you hear all of this stuff, that such and such is Antichrist, such and such is Antichrist, this, this particular person and all of these things. No, we're not going to get into that. But the Antichrist, the one that's against God, see that Satan has uh, his trinity during this time. For those of you believers and unbelievers as well, we know there's father, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and they're one. Now, Satan, being that he's an angel of light and a deceptor, he has mimicked the Trinity as well. Himself, the Antichrist, the false prophet, he's, he comes across as trying to mimic everything that God does. And he is the God of this world, the God of this particular world that we're in. So Satan, number one, Antichrist is number two. And that's in 2 Thessalonians 2.8. And as I mentioned, I'll put the scriptures down. The false prophet will be number three in hell to go along with the Antichrist and Satan. The false prophet is going to rise up during the time of, and this is taken from Daniel as well with the drink, the beast, the vision that he saw in the false. And here's the key thing. False prophets has always been around us, but this right here is almost like the master prophet. False prophets are right now. I've got videos in my, and check them out. There's false prophecy going on right now, and it has infiltrated YouTube. Satan has infiltrated YouTube with false prophecy. And the false prophets are all going to find themselves in a place called hell when it's all said and done. So the false prophet and the antichrist, which is the political part of the things, and where I don't have I don't want to get into the too complex of that, but they work hand in hand. So them two will be hand in hand and guess what? They're the first two beings, first two actual people that will be occupying hell. So you got Satan and you got the uh, Antichrist, and you got the false prophet. Them, the false prophets, these are actual people. These are going to be, uh, so you're going to have them occupying hell. Number four are fallen angels. Fallen angels are demons. Demons, the fallen angels are the ones that with Satan, when he was up in the heavenly realm, and he was supposed to be, living a great life up there, but he decided he wanted to be like God, be like the most high. And he decided that he wanted to dethrone God. And he 
conspired with the other angels of a plan to try to overthrow God. And <laughs> it's just a crazy story because, I mean, God is God. He's the one in charge, but he was not going to overthrow. Satan is not going to overthrow God. And got, he got kicked out of heaven and him and the angels out of here. And scholars, many scholars believe that it's either millions or billions of angels out of there that's down here on earth. They're called demons. And as we approach Halloween in this time, and I have other videos because I've had experience with demonic uh, situations and where Satan got a hold of me and utilized that in my life to try to destroy me. So the fallen angels, the demons, that's it for them. Their party's over. They can no longer go around and torment people the way that they've been doing. Because right now, Satan's kingdom is set up and he's got demons and generals and lieutenants and all set up just like an army, all parts around the world, with maybe within your city or even within your home or within your own life. He's got a stronghold and gotten hold of you. Number five, guess who's going to be there? Judas Iscariot. The one that betrayed Jesus, the one that, that, get, that sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, Judas killed himself, couldn't deal with the fact that he, he, he knew he was wrong. But guess what? He is out. of. He's going to be occupying hell. And that is going to and I'm going to lead a scripture there for that as well. And number six, and listen to me closely, because this is the point I wanted to get to as well. You got the other five people. You got the first two beings, human beings as well, that's going to be occupying hell, the false prophet and the antichrist. But there's a third group of beings that will be there, humans, that will be there. And guess who? It's uh, this the unsaved. It's the unsaved. It's those that reject Christ. Those that have rejected the message of the gospel. Think about it. I've talked about this for years. You think about it. You, be, you can't live a life here in most parts of the world, in the United States uh, definitely, of not hearing something about the gospel of Christ. The message is all around us in all kinds of ways. And I truly believe that those that go to hell, just like, uh, there's an example that uh, uh, um, the guy that was thirsty and was in hell and, and, and he recognized what was going on, that you're going to be in hell and you're going to have remembrance of every single time somebody told you about Christ. And you might be watching this video right now and being told about Christ. And this may be your last time to hear the message because tomorrow is not promised. You may not be able to hear anything else about Christ ever again. So I believe that you're going to be there with remembrance and setting there, that weeping, that gnashing, and all of that teeth that the Bible talks about, gives the description. You're going to be there in sorrow, knowing you had a chance to get right with God, and you didn't. So unsaved people is the number six point of the people that is the, per, the group the, that's not going to be able to occupy heaven, the unsaved. And this is in Je Revelation 21, 8. And as I mentioned, I'll put the scriptures in. John classified all sinners into eight categories. Let me read this to you. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burners with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's what people don't understand. There's a second death that you will suffer your soul just because your body, our bodies, we don't know. As I told you in the beginning, you don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know how long you're going to be here. Some of us are here 40, 50, 60 years. Others, you wonder, why did they die? Why did Kobe have to die so young? Kobe Bryant. Why did some people, that their lives are snuffed out? But guess what? 
The good news is that if you have got your heart right with the Lord, you don't have to worry about the second death. You have eternal life with Jesus Christ. That's why he came. He did not have hell set up for humanity. Hell was set up for Satan and his host. That's it. It's not for human beings to be cast into the lake of fire. But it's a choice you make. Rejecting him. You can't get into heaven. Rejecting God and who he is. Good. You can't give enough money to be able to get into heaven. You can't do enough good deeds to get into heaven. You have to submit your heart and life over to him and ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you for all of your sins. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit and believe that he is alive and well and died on that cross and was risen on the third day. That's what you have to do to inherit eternal life. And my fellow believers out there, those of you that don't uh, that know the Lord, you must share this message. Share your testimony at all costs. The, the judgment is coming. The time is coming. Look at the world right now. The turmoil. Look at the fires. Look at the hurricanes, earthquakes, the, the people, the hatred, and all of these things that are brewing in the attack against the church. It's coming. Are you going to be ready? I want to be ready. Let's fight the battle. Let's don't let Satan take your family down. Don't let him take you down. Stand firm. Put on the armor of God. Those of you that want to follow and continue on, I just ask you to subscribe, hit the like of this video, but come along with the journey because we need to stick together in these last days because it's a tough time and people are going to lose their souls and be cast into that lake of fire, a place that was never intended for us. So until next time, stand firm and may God keep his hand upon you and bless you and protect you and keep you. Take care. God bless.